It's been a while and I wanted to just give you a quick update on how the project's going and where we're at. So we're going to start today with a little a look at the thermoanalysis and then we're going to get into where we're at on the manufacturing and creating parts uh, to move the engine into uh, reality. All right, let's start and just touch base on a couple of uh, thermodynamics or uh, heat uh, analysis points. We did a heat analysis to, just to create a baseline on the engine, and we're looking at basically, uh, you know, the, the heat and how the heat transfers in the engine is key to its operation. And we're not so much as looking at the fundamental aspects of what makes a Sterling work, but we want to look at our design. We want to see how can we optimize the heat flowing into the engine and the heat coming out of the engine. Uh, look at the geometry and see how that affects the heat flow. So that's what we've done here. And I just have a couple of slides to uh, look at that. If we look at this first, um, this first uh, area here, we'll see I have the head of the engine. And if you look at it, this, this part that you see is in blue here is the part that will be in the heat source, either in the fire, the wood, the gas, the solar, whatever the heat source might be. And then this area here is the area that the fins will come down on each cycle and transfer the heat from this area into this working uh, gas. And this is a sectional view of that head. And what we're looking at here is the heat flux, right? And that's the movement of heat through the material. It's not the temperature, but it's the, the flow of the heat. If you think of it as water flowing down a river, um, this is how the, the, the heat flows through this geometry. And what we want is the best flow as possible to make it as efficient as possible. And the higher, the, the, the deeper the color, the higher the flow of heat. So we can see here we're having a, a good flow of heat here and here. Um, and this is at a constant uh, temperature, so we're not going to see any heat flow through there. Um, uh, and really what we're looking at is how that heat pushes through this, this geometry. Okay, you can see here we have the center section, and it's a little bit, uh, it's a little uh, uh, blue. Um, and we'd really like it to be a little bit more heat flow through there. So what we did was we added a, a leg. We added a center leg, as you could see up in the upper right hand here, to actually boost that up a little bit. And then we thicken that leg to actually increase the heat flow even more. And you can see that's what's in this lower area here, um, showing the improved heat flow through the center area, which is key for heating up uh, you know, two of the main heating fins on the displacer and for heating that air in, in this area. So we were able to get some some improved heat flow by changing the geometry slightly. Now let's let's look at the other um, the other piece of the engine, the cold end, and see basically how the heat is flowing in that area. And once again, we have the piston here, and we have the cold uh, cylinder here with the fins out to the air. And what we're wanting to do is get the heat from this piston, which the uh, displacer fins are going into and get it out of the engine. And we can see here that the most of the flux, most of the flow is concentrated through the skirt of the piston, which is this line right here, and it's going out to the fins. We'd really like to see a little bit better flow through this center part of the piston. And what we did was we added a few or four fins to that particular area, and that did help and improve that flow tremendously. And you can see here, by adding these four fins, basically how the flow has changed. And here's a, here's a, a quarter sectional view of that. And you can see this red area here, which is an entirely new uh, heat flow path out of that piston, is, uh, is really helping to suck some of that heat out of this center area and move it out into the fins. So those are the two areas we focused on from a thermodynamics, from a, a heat uh, transfer efficiency standpoint, and also to develop a baseline for the engine so we know, okay, we're getting this kind of heat transfer with this geometry. If we change it, we can see that type of change in the performance of the engine further on down the road. All right, next I'd like to switch gears a little bit here and look at how we're coming with uh, building the engine, some of the manufacturing uh, products. And remember, in uh, with our with our project we have two goals first uh, we want to minimize the craftsmanship of the engine right we don't want this to be something that someone has 
uh, uh, some, someone has a specialty in honing Stirling engines. We want anyone to be able to take these parts, put them together, and come up with a Stirling engine, right? So we want to minimize the craftsmanship of this. We want to make it so, just like the Remington rifle, where you know they made all the parts a certain size, and they came together, and the gun worked all the time. The same thing with this, same principle. Our second is we want our manufacturing process to be low cost, uh, but yet still be... Uh, simple enough to achieve some some low volume targets not not high volume production but low volume targets and so to achieve that what we've done is we've gone through and looked at each of the components and um, the significant uh, challenge here is to create these aluminum uh, components that are rather large and um, to create them at a, at a relatively low cost. And here I've just identified the key elements. We have the head, um, the head here. We have the head here of the engine. And uh, here's the overall engine. You can see the components in there, the color coloring. We have the head, which is going to be aluminum casting. The displacer, it was aluminum casting with a roll tube in between the two caps, the two aluminum cast caps. And then we have the uh, aluminum piston. We have the uh, hot cylinder, which is basically just a standard steel pipe with two, uh, two uh, steel flanges on it. And then we have the coal cylinder, which will be a aluminum uh, casting. And there are just a couple more parts um, that comprise the engine. Bear with me here. And we can see the linkages here. They're just going to be flat steel stock and aluminum uh, piston rods, most likely. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that uh, with these Stirling engines, the power density is relatively low. So we have parts that are relatively large. If we were just to take a block of aluminum and cast that, uh, excuse me, not cast it, but just a block of it and machine it, it would take us too long. It would be way too costly. So what we're doing is we're using a loss foam casting process. We're taking foam, standard insulating foam, and we're using a 3D CNC router, and we're cutting the foam uh, into the models of the parts, and then we're casting them to come up with a near net, um, uh, near net uh, part that will then be further machined to get to the exact uh, specific dimensions. Now to do that, we take the CAD model, and we develop tool paths, which is this diagram you're seeing in the bottom right, and those tool baths basically tell the router which, which uh, paths to take to get the features of the parts that we need. All right. And we're making uh, good progress on this. It is taking us a little longer on the tool paths than we thought, but we're making good progress. And here you can see, here's the shop bot. And uh, basically the shop bot is this router, high speed router, that's mounted on this gantry. And all these axes are computer controlled. And basically, the uh, tool paths are fed into the machine, and the machine then goes about and cuts out these, these parts. And you can see here, you can recognize some of these parts. These are sections, two-inch sections, of the cylinder along this line. And this will be the head, and over here will be the piston. And you can see how those parts are starting to come to be. And then once those, are, those passes are finished, what we do is we just pop out the uh, pop out the parts, uh, hot glue them together, and there we have our parts that are ready for the next phase, which is the casting. We pour right into the foam, it evaporates out, and uh, what's left is a void that's filled by the metal, and you have your near net parts. Not perfect, but it's close, and it only needs uh, a small amount of machining instead of starting from uh, scratch. Okay, well that's where we're at. Things are moving along well. Things are getting very busy. And we are pretty much on track. Um, I'm hoping in the next uh, two weeks to have some parts poured and we'll give you another update as to uh, how the aluminum uh, casting is going. And i um, kind of excited to see that. We have fired up the, um, the mini foundry and it looks, uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, wife is getting a little nervous about melting aluminum around the house uh, but uh, that goes with the territory anyway with thanks for thanks again for your support and we'll give you another update as soon as we get to uh, pouring some metal and uh, let you know how that goes and um, get this uh, get this engine into uh, into production 
All right. Thanks again. Talk to you later.